I think that we can go ahead uh, and get started if you all are ready to. Um, I'm Cynthia Miller. I'm with the Austin Water Public Information Office. This is the 38th and 40th Streets Water and Wastewater Pipeline Renewal Project. That's a mouthful. We're really glad that you're here. Um, we've got a great team assembled to talk about this project and to answer your questions. So um, with no further ado, we can get started. Uh, let me say welcome again and quickly run over our agenda for this evening. We'll introduce the project team who's here. Um, and then our project manager, James Mendez, will give a project overview. Uh, he'll talk a lot about what to expect during construction, which is important. And then we'll take questions. And if you could hold those until the end, we'll have instructions on, on how to get your questions submitted. And of course, at the end, we'll make sure you have our, our contacts. So again, thank you for being here. And, and y'all have already met me. I'm Cynthia Miller with Austin Waters Public Information Office. And James, you wanna kick off the introductions next? Sure, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening. My name is uh, James Mendez. And as Cynthia said, I'll be the uh, project manager for the 38th and 40th uh, Street uh, Water and Wastewater Pipeline Rehab Project. Uh, just a little bit about, about myself, uh, I do have uh, just a hair over 12 years of experience in construction, uh, seven of which have been with uh, the city of Austin and the last uh, two and a half years or so uh, working in the role as a PM. Uh, excited to start this new project and uh, I'll hand it off to our next uh, member of the project team, uh, Deidre Kirk. Good evening, my name is Deidre Kirk. As project sponsor, my responsibilities include overall project implementation, project oversight, funding, and response to technical questions. Next, we'll have Simon Orta. Uh -oh. Simon, you are muted. I just saw that. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this I'm Simon Orta. I'm the Engineer Construction Coordinator Supervisor. I manage the uh, Construction Inspection Group. Francisco Peña will be your inspector, and I will be working closely with him to try to deliver this project. Francisco? Hi, my name is Francisco Peña. I'm going to be, uh, be an inspector of this project. We're available on my cell phone. I prefer calls than emails, so be aware of that. Then I'll be over talking to uh, residents and contractors. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael Snyder. I'm with Cedar Hills Construction. Uh, I'm going to be the project manager for the general contractor. Been working on City of Austin jobs for about eight years now. So pretty familiar with the process and uh, looking forward to working on this project, everyone. Okay, and y'all already met me, so we can move on. All right, so uh, just to give everyone a, a project overview of the CIP project that we're speaking of this evening, uh, this is a water and wastewater uh, rehabilit re rehabilitation project. Uh, where existing lines, uh, both water and wastewater, will be abandoned in place, and new water and wastewater utilities will be installed. Uh, for the this is uh, part of the uh, Renew in Austin program, uh, which is to in to strengthen our uh, water infrastructure. Which, as we said, we're replacing both water and wastewater mains uh, that have a history of uh, breaks or signs of deterioration. Uh, for the overall project. Uh, we're looking at uh, approximately 3,144 linear feet of water line and uh, 2,912 linear feet of uh, wastewater line, including the uh, pertinences with the water lines. Uh, that includes uh, not only the main, but the uh, new services that will be run to the houses and apartments and other businesses, as well as uh, uh, water valves and fire hydrants. And for the wastewater, that also 
uh, includes uh, not only the new main, but uh, the new service lines and as well as uh, new manholes. And uh, for the location of our project, as we see here on the map, uh, starting uh, at the north there on 40th Street, we will have both uh, water and wastewater uh, that'll extend from Red River all the way to I-35 Service Road. And working our way south on 39th Street, uh, we do have solely wastewater. There is no new water on the stretch of 39th Street. And that'll start at Red River as it's shown on the map and that ends uh, approximately 135 feet uh, west of Wilbert Road there. And then working our way south on 38th Street, that street uh, 38th will have both uh, water and wastewater utilities installed for the entire length. And as on 40th Street, that extends from Red River all the way to the 35 service road. And there also is that's that little elbow down there on Harmon Avenue, that's approximately 250 feet of just water. And that extends along Harmon Avenue, south of 38th. Um, and that's about uh, 200, 250 feet. And uh, just the quick overview of the of our timeline. Uh, this construction project is slated for approximately 14 months of uh, construction. Uh, that in does include substantial and final completion. Um, and we're looking to issue an NTP uh, later this spring. We do have a couple of things that we need to work out as far as some coordination with Texas Gas uh, in order to get uh, a more definite uh, NTP for our contractor. Uh, while we're working, uh, as the project uh, as, as the project carries on, uh, roads will be temporarily restored. But once uh, all utilities are in place, that's when uh, the final pavement, the final surface, will be uh, repaved. And uh, for any kind of repaving uh, operations, yes, uh, we do intend on uh, providing uh, updates to the residences that typically is in the form of a door hanger that our the inspector will uh, provide. And I'm just going to jump in and say NTP stands for notice to proceed. And no one who's attending this is expected to know what that stands for. So I'm just letting y'all know. So yeah, notice to proceed sort of coming any moment now. Uh, with yeah, my apologies, Cynthia. If I have a throw out an acronym there, I'm sorry. I forget that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so if there's I'm an acronym. To... Uh, Thanks for the clarification. I'm just, I'm just here to help. You engineers have a lot of fancy terms. <laughs> All right, and just to give a quick overview of what to expect during construction. Uh, next slide. Uh, so generally with these types of projects, the crew will cross uh, the front of your house several times. Uh, that's generally uh, because so I guess we'll start with the first thing here, prep work. So the prep work will start, uh, the contractor will have their surveyor uh, stake and mark the project, the limits of construction. Usually they're marking where uh, their utilities will go. Uh, also part of the prep work is um, their environmental controls. They'll be setting up any kind of silt fence, uh, mulch stocks, tree protection. Tree protection is in the form generally of either the um, chain link fencing or the two by fours where they kind of put the boards around the fence, the, the, the trunk line. And once all those, uh, once our environmental, I'm sorry, once our um, surveying is complete, environmental controls are in place, then our contractor will begin on the excavation. Uh, excavation, generally how these projects work, our contractor will install beginning with uh, wastewater. And they'll do all the wastewater for the entire project, uh, excavating and installing pipe. They'll go street by street. Uh, the first thing that they'll start with is they'll start with the, uh, the main. So that'll be the first trip that you see going down your street will be the installation of the wastewater main. Once the main is in place, they'll fall back and then they'll uh, come back and 
uh, put in the wastewater services. That's where you'll see them kind of pass the second time. And once that new utility is in place and it's tested by our inspector, then they'll put down the temporary pavement. Uh, the temporary pavement is, is exactly that. It's only temporary. Uh, this is just uh, for the utility trench and following the wastewater, they'll follow the same process. Uh, they'll go through, once they finish all the wastewater and the appurtenances, mains, utilities, services, all that, then they'll start on the water. And water is the same idea. They'll come through, lay the main, fall back, do the services. And once all the appurtenances are in, uh, fire hydrants, valves, services, um, our inspector will perform any tests that includes uh, uh, chlorination, uh, hydrostatic uh, pressure testing. And once that line passes all its tests, then it's the same idea. We'll put in the temporary paving. And, and again, it's just a temporary patch. Uh, once it's all said and done, once all our utilities are in place, uh, they've been accepted and have passed all the testing, all the testing, uh, we will then go through with the final paving. And that's where uh, they'll come in with the milling machines, uh, I believe this one is just uh, a mill and overlay. Uh, so it's just the uh, top two inches of the existing asphalt that's stripped away by the milling machine. And they come back and then pave it with a uh, new paving surface. Uh, just a little caveat here at the bottom of the screen. Our general working hours are uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, that is uh, uh, seven days a week, Monday, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, and just a little information on our open cut trenching, what you will be seeing as the contractor is installing our new utilities. Uh, the photo here that you see is a typical trench uh, when installing new utilities. Uh, just a couple of items to be aware of. There is heavy machinery that is used. Uh, I, I believe some of the lines are as deep as uh, 10 to 12 feet deep. So there, there will be a, a pretty deep cut in the, in the street, but uh, generally as they are excavating, uh, I do believe that our um, traffic control and uh, the, uh, well, our traffic control does provide where we are working on one side of the street at a time. So it is closed off. I do believe it's either a uh, uh, setup uh, is delineated by grabber cones or even water filled barriers typically. Uh, so the general idea of an open cut trench, um, contractor will excavate, install the new main, and then backfill. They're, and they're backfilling as they go. Uh, there will not be an open trench left overnight. Uh, it's usually backfilled uh, at the end of the day after that day's operation is completed. And uh, just a little bit about the right of way. Uh, this uh, this project is uh, completely in the right of way. Uh, in some cases, uh, the right of way is approximately 10 to 15 feet behind the back of curb. Uh, there are some instances where we will be working in uh, in the front yard in, in uh, various front yards. I don't have the actual addresses at this time, but there are some, what we call private laterals. Uh, that's where uh, we are relocating either a water or a wastewater service, or in some cases, both. And where that service needs to be replaced, uh, in order to reconnect it, we do have to go uh, what we call either behind the water meter or behind the clean out. Uh, so that's the instance where uh, we could possibly be working uh, outside of the right of way. And in those instances, our inspector, Francisco, uh, he will be working directly with the resident that's gonna be affected by this case. Um, first, the uh, first step is to get a right of entry signed. Uh, that right of entry is the permission from the homeowner 
to give us permission to work uh, outside of the right of way and in your front yard. Uh, the contractor is working with a subcontractor who is a certified plumber. And that certified plumber will then make the connection from uh, whether, you know, uh, speaking of water, from the new water meter to your existing uh, plumbing in the house. Now, it does vary as far as like how far back we do go into the yard, and it does vary on a case by case basis. And uh, these will be reviewed by the project team as well as our inspector. Uh, so, should there, as Francisco said, should there any be, be any questions or concerns, he is our go to guy for anything like that. Uh, just the note here down at the bottom, uh, sorry, Cynthia, just for the uh, uh, any uh, landscaping or irrigation uh that needs to be removed that will be coordinated by our inspector with the uh with the residents where that is uh where it will be affected uh tree trimming uh it's a common occurrence on on our cip projects uh as you can see there are some there are clearance specifications that uh, the city of austin needs to follow in the case where we do need to uh, trim some trees uh, in order to provide uh, working space and not only just to bring it up to code as well. Uh, that will be coordinated by our city arborist. And uh, generally that's, that's done on a case by case basis. Uh, just a quick hit on traffic. Uh, lanes will be closed. There are uh, several detours that are included on this project. Um, I can't get into all the details. Uh, it's, it's a lot of different uh, detours that we will be setting up, you know, phase by phase. But um, as we set up traffic control, uh, we will generally, uh, those traffic control switches are done on the weekend. Um, so we try to minimize the amount of disruption um, while we're moving traffic. And uh, just a, a note here is that um, although it might, you might um, access to your home, it might be interrupted from time to time, but it will never be completely cut off. Uh, we will always provide access. Um, our contractors are required uh, to maintain access to the residences. That will never be an issue where um, you're, you're blocked into your driveway or, um, or or you can't get into your driveway when you're pulling in. Um, I mean, should that happen, it does. I, I won't say that it never will happen, but it does occur. But our contractors there, they typically have a steel plate on site and that steel plate's usually put down so that way we can uh, maintain access to uh, your driveway. Uh, next up is a uh, utility interruption. Uh, now there are several instances where there could be a utility interruption. Uh, first case, there's uh, when we're when we're installing the water utility uh, before we make a connection to before we connect our new utility to an existing utility, uh, we need to perform a test shutout. Uh, now, what that test shutout does, it allows us to isolate the line and make sure that our existing city valves are operating correctly. So that way, when the contractor goes to make his connection, uh, the, the water's turned off and he can make his connection without, uh, you know, water going everywhere. <laughs> it allows them to make a, a connection. So generally how that happens, our inspector will request a what we call a test shutout. And then Austin Water Utility, their valve crew will come out, operate the valves, ensure that they're working, and the water will be off for generally about an hour. And that's during a test shutout. Um, now, our protocol, we do not provide notice for test shutouts. Now, Simon, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, if that protocol has changed. No, it has not. We uh, do not do that because it's only uh, interrupted for a very brief 
time, maybe 10 minutes to 15 minutes. If it's going to be more than an hour, we will send out notices. But other than that, uh, by the time we shut the water off and figured out that there is no sir, there is no pressure and we good to go, uh, we're turning it back on and the customer gets their water back. Great. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so now the next occurrence would be uh, after we perform our test shutout, uh, the contractor will then schedule the actual shutout when they're ready to perform the work, when they're ready to make the connection. Uh, now, generally during the connection, these connections take uh, anywhere from as I've seen as short as four hours, I've seen as long as eight hours. Uh, now, in that instance, um, our inspector will be delivering notices to those that will be affected by the shutout. Uh, and that's also another purpose of the test shutout. During the test shutout, our inspector is observing. Uh, he's taking note of the footprint of who will be put out of water uh, during the time of the shutout. And I believe CMD's uh, protocol is a 48 hour notice. Uh, and this notice is in the form of a door hanger. Uh, I do believe also Austin Water, their uh, PIO, Ms. Uh, Cynthia Miller, uh, she will be sending out email uh, distribution. I do, uh, I'm, Cynthia, I don't know if this one, if this neighborhood has uh, an email set up like on other projects where you're able to send out those types of notices. Yep. We, and at the end of the presentation, we'll make sure you know where to go to sign up for those so that you're on the notifications email list, which is very handy. Great. Thank you, Cynthia. So those are the two common occurrences. Uh, one more occurrence that, that may happen for your water. It's also a very short temporary uh, disruption of service is when our contractor is making uh, the final connection from the old main to the new main when we're switching your service over to the new utility. And generally when this is done, as I said, it's a very short interruption. Our inspector, as well as our contractor, uh, Cedar Hills has done a great job as far as uh, they've got a good reputation as far as uh, communicating with the public, ensuring that they're aware of what's to come. So it'll either be our contractor or our inspector who will be uh, contacting and notifying the residents on the on the day by day basis when they're planning to make those uh, final utility connections. All right, and it uh, looks like we're here at the end of our presentation. Yeah. Think, uh, now's the time for our questions and comments. Yeah, thank you so much. And I know we already have questions that have uh, been asked. Uh, if anyone else wants to ask a question, you've got your directions right there. Um, and let's see, uh, Emily, do you want to tell us uh, which question we sh question we should start with? Sure thing. Uh, someone has raised their hand, so I would say let's let them speak, and then we can get to the questions that are typed in. So, okay, Susan, I um, believe that you can unmute and you can ask your question now. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, am I correct in understanding that um, this will only be water and wastewater and it will not deal with stormwater? We have a lot of stormwater collection and there's no storm drains on 38th Street between that I know of between 38th and I mean between Red River. And so is that correct that this has nothing to do with that? Yes, ma'am, you are correct. OK. And am I understanding correctly that the street parking would only be um, cut off on one side of the street at a time? Or is it possible that um, you were talking about access to driveways, but what about street parking? Uh, street parking, it, it depends on what uh, scope of work. There are various uh, traffic controls that we do have for each stage of the project. Uh, we have detours for um, the wastewater. We have detours for the water. Uh, it, it'll just vary. I, I did have a chance to look at some of the traffic control. Um, and 
there are some instances where, uh, you know, 40th, 39th, or 38th, they will be narrowed down to one way. So, yes, there will be some instances where um, actually, if that's the case, then there probably will not be any street parking while there's a detour in place. And will, so uh, will we have notification of that ahead of time? Yes, ma'am. If we sign up for the, to be notified of project updates, we, we will get notification of that? Yes, ma'am. And generally uh, in, on previous projects, what we have done to help, um, uh, we will put up um, what we call a message board. And that message board will, uh, uh, you know, you've probably seen them up and down 35 or any other construction site where it'll it'll kind of say, uh, you know, traffic change coming in the next seven days or something along those lines. Okay, so, and I know you don't know this absolutely, but when the street is closed off altogether, and you're saying people will still be able to get to their driveways and so on, but um, is that likely to last for days or just a day at a time or any thoughts, any kind of advice on that? Uh, let me, I'd need to look at the traffic controls a little bit more to see what that would entail. I do believe at looking at a few, at some of it, uh, I've got some of it here. You can jump in a little bit, James. Sure, if you don't mind, Michael. So um, with the parking on the, on both sides of the streets, um, I think between the major streets, like along 38th, um, from say Red River to Harmon, uh, we typically will have, we'll be working on one side of the street and so there wouldn't be parking there. And we have to allow one way traffic on the other side of the street. So for a circumstance like that, wouldn't be any parking on the street from or uh, during our working hours from seven to seven. There would be no parking on on the street. Yes. Okay. And then um, I think you're asking about street closures. So um, I think the the hard closures generally are near the intersections, and uh, so we'll block off say 200 feet that's in our working area um, and so you may have to go around the block you know to get to your house to go around the closure and say your house was in that closure um, you know we'll have barricades up but you'll be able to go around them and our guys will help you get around any equipment that we have uh, if we've got a, a trench open we'll have a road plate uh, it just may take a couple extra minutes, you know, like five minutes to get the road plate in place or something like that. And then you'd be able to get to your driveway. Okay. And so, um, so though for, for the part of the street that's not closed off, will there be street parking on that part or will there just not be any street parking at all on the whole street? Probably uh, no parking, but, but so... Our traffic control is generally set up um, about 200 feet long at a time. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, say 100 feet on both sides for lead in. Um, and then maybe outside of that, we could allow street parking. Okay. Um, that, that's also going to change each day. As uh -huh. we install the pipe, you know, we'll be moving down the street. Uh -huh. So for 38th Street, it'll be several days that that's occurring. But from one day to the next, it may be a different 200 feet or something. Okay, so it's 200 feet and then 100 feet on either side of it. There won't be any street parking, it sounds like. Roughly, yes. Okay, roughly. Okay, and that will that will progress down the street over, over time. Okay. Yes. And Susan, uh, keep in mind, this is Simon. Um, we will put up no parking signs along the curb sides on the, all the streets uh, far 72 hours in advance oh. of the work to start. So okay. you will know when that is coming around the corner. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Those are really good questions. Does does that answer your series of questions, Susan? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, good. 
Um, so let's see, Emily, who should we go to next? Uh, the question in the chat was the first one that was posted. Okay. Um, let's, let me go there. Let's see, we've got, uh, well, you know what? I'm not sure if I'm in the right order or not, but here's one. The justification for the project is to replace aging infrastructure in this neighborhood. Why is 38th and a half street excluded from this project? Deirdre, I don't know if that would be a good question for you uh, to speak to as our sponsor. I'm coming. Hmm. Yeah. Generally, our projects are based off of break history data. And so there was there's not a significant break history on that street. And that's why it's not included in this project. And there's a whole algorithm set up to evaluate frequency of breaks within certain durations uh, that's being used citywide. This is a citywide project. Um, and I apologize. I did skip over that first question that was in the chat. So let me go over to there. Um, from, from the 14 months that we've indicated uh, this to be the duration for this project, how many days or weeks should we expect to have the work on the street? Let's see. So for the, uh, 14 you know months. Uh, let me, James, I apologize. Sure. My bad. I needed to back up. There was a precursor to that. So it'll make more sense. Ah. He's this, this, uh, this attendee is interested in 40, 40th street. So he's on 40th street and his concern is closing this street. And then, um, as a corollary that he'd like to know out of the 14 months about how long do we think we'll be on 40th street. So sorry to interrupt, but it makes a lot more sense now. Gotcha. Uh, Michael, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Do you, do you have an idea of uh, maybe a timeline for installation of the utilities on 40th Street by any chance? Uh, I can I can work on pulling the schedule up, but it's going to be several months, uh, probably. Uh, I mean, I, I just guess like four or five months, uh, probably five months. We've got a bunch of wastewater and water there. Um, and then, you know, even once all that's completed, we'll be coming back for the paving in there as well. So it could be more than that. Mm -hmm. And Michael, like how we discussed in the beginning, um, generally you'll mobilize and do all the wastewater and then fall back and then do all the water. Is that, is that the case for this project? So it won't be five months straight on one street, um, it'll be five months, you know, throughout the project, throughout the whole project. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, you know, sometimes it works out where we can do the wastewater for one street and then switch to water in the same street. Um, but that's not always the case. It's, it really just depends on, uh, you know, if we encounter any issues on the project that we have to move away to, you know, give us time to figure it out or, it's always different. Um, so you know, a roundabout answer, but um, sure. we'll probably be jumping back and forth. Wastewater and water lines are installed at different depths. And so that's, I find that a lot of people say, well, why aren't you just doing it at once? Well, they're really installed in different places. So if that's, that's helpful. Um, in terms of concern about closing 40th street, um, I think that our earlier discussion would apply here that 40th Street won't be closed per se, although lanes of traffic will be closed off at some points. Is that accurate? Correct. So this, the street won't be fully closed, but there, like we were talking about earlier, there will be um, the traffic, you know, lanes will be closed at different times. If, if I might say something, Francisco Pena, at sometimes, not not all the time, but the pipes, they're more older than other ones, going to be keep on breaking. It's going to take us longer to to do the repairs. To do it when a, we have a water line break, it's going to take longer. So that day, 
the contractor is going to concentrate on, on fixing the break instead of the install of the pipe. So we can't say exactly how many hours or how many parts we're going to be uh, no parking signs on it because we don't get time to, we don't know if it's going to break. Uh, that's what I mean. So we need to put a consideration with the neighbors. Something break, I will go over and knock on doors and let them know that, you know, why we have a, a broken line. So it's going to take a little bit longer, maybe uh, a few more hours until Austin Water come over and close our g balls because they're the only ones that can close it. But uh, they, they, they need to put this in consideration too, as for the sake of the residents. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Um, and please continue to, you know, follow up on your questions if we haven't fully answered. Um, uh, so, but I'll move on to a new one. Uh, Transportation and Public Works has plans this summer to add bike lanes, speed humps, et cetera, in this neighborhood. Are we coordinating excavation with Transportation and Public Works? Um, I have not been privy to that project. Uh, typically with those types of projects, they are just uh, at the surface uh, for traffic humps or speed humps, uh, depending on the type, that's usually just uh, a very concentrated area. It's just where that speed hump is going to go in. Uh, they won't come back and, uh, you know, remove the new asphalt that we just put down they'll probably it's 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 really just more in that location of where that speed hump or uh what was the other infrastructure that they were putting in cynthia that they mentioned speed humps and what else bike lanes bike lanes okay yeah and and, and bike lanes uh that's just a matter of uh pavement striping generally um and, and again that's just at the surface level um I, i'd imagine that project probably would be coming in after we are all said and done. Okay, these are really good questions. Uh, I would encourage you all to keep them coming. I'm not seeing any new ones right now, but these are good questions, so please don't be shy. Anyone? Hmm. Well, while you all think about whether you've got any more questions, let's put up the contact information. And here we go. Very important. We want you to sign up for email updates. If you go to this web page and scroll down, you'll see a communications bar. And we will be sending out um, overarching email messages about what's happening. They won't be minute by minute. And like Francisco was saying, you know, these things are fluid. A lot of things can change in a day, but we will do our best to make sure you understand uh, big project movements and why different things are happening and so on and so forth. And my experience has been that these, that our project teams are really great about being accessible and answering questions. And I hope that the Austin Water PIO office proves great and helpful as well. So I guess we can pull up the contact slide and make sure that you all have this information. And uh, I still don't see any other questions. So we'll give everyone a moment to to make sure they get this information, but I guess otherwise then I think that we're wrapping up. Does anyone have any final final comments or contributions or questions? I do, I just wanted to say that resident, that feel free to contact me when they see me around. Uh, I'm free to go over and talk to them person or my phone or email, whatever they need, I can help it with I'll be around all day. That's Francisco and thank you. And and I can vouch. 
I know every many people find you really helpful and you are around all the time. And so it's good to know that guy. But I hope you'll record all of this information. I hope you'll sign up for updates. And I guess if no one has any other questions, then we will sign off. So thank you all very much for joining us tonight. And we hope that you'll encourage your neighbors and friends to sign up for notifications. Um, and, uh, oh, somebody is applauding. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, but please do let your neighbors and friends know that uh, we want to uh, be as helpful as possible. Construction's never fun for anyone, but you all definitely need new pipes. And when it's all said and done, this is going to be a, a really good thing. So thanks again. Reach out to any of us and everyone have a good night. Excuse me, Cynthia. Did, oh, yes, ma'am. Did we show the, um, the sign up link? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And we're showing it again. Look at that. <laughs> yes. So please do. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Have a good night.